want to make more money, get more customers, right? Ramp up those ads, drive more business, and that's the way you succeed, right? Wrong. Stick around. You're going to find out why. Welcome to HVAC Greatness, your weekly source for HVAC business excellence. By subscribing and tuning in here, you'll get insider access to proven strategies, tips, and insights for the HVAC business owner who's tired of the stress and frustrations and struggles that are common to HVAC. Let's redesign your new, highly organized, and hugely profitable HVAC business where being an owner is fun again. Hey guys, Pete here, HVAC Greatness. Welcome back to the podcast. Um, since YouTube has come out with a podcast um, specific category, we're going to go ahead and revamp this uh, old podcast platform that we've kind of been sporadic, hit and miss. So any videos after today's, you're going to start to see a pattern. We're going to start to develop some uh, interesting themes. We'll still have some people on and interview them and whatnot. But the point is to give you a resource when you're riding around and keep your mind on business and growing and developing and improving and being more profitable and, you know, having a good quality of life. So the topic of the day is specifically we're talking about uh, what it takes to be successful in terms of making more money. And a lot of the, I guess, general consensus out there is that you you just do more advertising. But as you grow your business, for those of you who've been around a while, you start to notice, and actually not everybody notices this, by the way, uh, you'll be reminded if you're paying attention, you'll start to notice that less and less of your workload comes from Google business, pay-per-click, and your online marketing efforts. Um, it tends to come from repeat business, uh, word of mouth your neighbors and uh, people have done business with you before. Generally you start to build a following. And if you, let's say started your business many, many years ago, that momentum that you have is wonderful. But if you're just starting, it can be a bit of a challenge. And I'm going to give you an example here. I've got a, I've got a business owner that I know and I've, we've known each other and he's been part of some of the stuff that we've been doing for a while. And um, I was there when he sold his business. He had started, gosh, probably back in uh, the 90s. Sold his business and uh, and because his, his son didn't want to buy the business, only to find out later his son decided he wants to start his own business. So dad's going to step in and help him out. Well, he, the dad, had forgotten what it takes to be effective in the marketing game. Actually, hadn't forgotten. He had learned during a different time. And you start to realize that it's very expensive to constantly supply new customers. And so what that means is we have to approach our marketing game really um, from a position of uh, strategy. We, we really have to do our homework and we really have to be effective. Now, most HVAC business owners, they use a method, what I call... <laughs> the shotgun marketing circle of death, the shotgun marketing circle of death. <clears throat> and so that means that pretty much anybody with a heating and air conditioning unit is, is, is a potential customer, right? Uh, reminds me of Bill Burr. If you ever watch his stand up, he, he goes to buy a gun for the first time. And the advice was he was given by the, by the, uh, the guy behind the desk there behind the uh, counter was get yourself a shotgun. <laughs> you want a good spread, right? And because no matter, you just point in the general direction, you're going to hit what you're aiming at, right? It's got a good spread. It's, it's kind of what the advertising versus a, a, a pistol where the bullet, you know, most people miss with a with a pistol as close as, you know, six or eight feet. They just miss because you really have to be accurate because very pinpoint. So shotgun marketing circle of death means that we tend to believe that if anybody has a heating and air conditioning unit that's broken, we want that business. And as time evolves, you'll see that that's not the case, that there's a certain type of customer that you do want. And there's a lot of other types of customers that you just don't want. They're just not good for your business. It could be that they want the cheapest or they're just difficult to do business with or just a host of other things. Um, but fundamentally, once you've built a business and you've established a a, a, a set of values as a company and, 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 and a culture, um, people are drawn to that who are like you, you know, right? People like people like themselves. That's part of the sales game. 
but they tend to be turned off by things that are too different. And this is important to know when you're doing your marketing. So what we encourage that you practice is a concept called magnetic alignment marketing. Now, if you think about a magnet, if you get it, you know, if you get it just right, they, they attract, right? But if you get it just wrong, they repel. And what we're talking about here is the ability to attract and repel uh, in the marketplace. And so that can be done, by the way. It, 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 it requires a little bit of uh, understanding of how uh, the buying psychology works. And therefore, you must adjust your marketing and selling psychologies so that you are able to uh, attract the right kind of customers. And you can't do that until you kind of know what those values are and, and you know what it is that you represent and, and, and a host of other different things that it really takes some work. And this is kind of the stuff that, that Pete does with HVAC Greatness is, you know, walks you through that. But just suffice it to say this, okay? I want to help you on the podcast. Mostly your customers, they do consumer product marketing and advertising, I should say. And so what that means is, They've seen their whole lives how advertising is done, right? You buy a pair of tennis shoes, you, you know, buy a new car, new truck, um, you know, even, even some new tools that's product marketing. And we see kind of how that structure is, but the problem with buying a product and comparing that when you're out selecting your product and comparing the different options of where you should buy that product from it typically forces a consumer to choose their selection base just on price. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if we've got the same product, you've got a you know carrier model number, such and such, or a Linux model number, whatever, right? And you have a price and that's what your customer wants for whatever reason. Well, if there's another carrier or a Linux dealer in town and they're offering basically the same thing at a different price, well, they're going to go with the cheaper price. Why? Because they're consumers and they understand how to purchase products. And because you're offering a service, you don't want to do product marketing. We call this transformational service marketing. And what it is, it's kind of like life after your new system. And so it speaks to Um, not the features, but the benefits of those features and, and what life would, would bring after that. So instead of talking about the new, uh, air scrubber and, you know, you, you, it operates at this power level and I'm making stuff up because I don't know anything about the air scrubber, (laughs) but it, it has this type of technical results and everything else, whatever it is that you do. Um, perhaps what you should do is talk about life after that and talk about little Jimmy, you know, who suffers from allergies because he's sensitive to, to particulate in the air or VOCs or, or whatever it is that uh, your particular IQ device controls. And we start talking about, you know, he can come home, he's not doped up on medication and he can breathe normally. He's home, right? So that's life after the system. People will pay top dollar for that. People don't want your air scrubber or your UV light or your, you know, your HEPA filtration system. They don't want your air conditioner. They don't want your furnace. They don't want your uh, ERVs or HRV. They don't want any of that stuff. What they want is what it produces. So let me give you an example. I heard this story. Maybe you've heard this before. Why did the man go to the hardware store and buy a quarter-inch drill bit? Why did the man go to the store and buy a quarter-inch drill bit? Well, if you've heard this, you're probably going to say, well, because he wanted a quarter inch hole. So he didn't dry. He didn't buy the drill bit because he wants a drill bit. He bought the drill bit because he wants a quarter inch hole. Get it? All right. So people aren't buying heating and air conditioning because they want, you know, your air conditioning. They want the results. And if you take it a level farther, why did the man buy the quarter inch drill bit? Well, he didn't, he doesn't want the quarter inch drill bit. He doesn't even want the quarter inch hole in his wall. What he wants is to be able to mount his kid's uh, bedroom play unit that mounts to the wall securely so it won't fall over so he can be his son's hero or his daughter's 
hero if it's a little thing for, for, for girls, what have you. Get it? So it's the transformation. It's life after. And this is what HVAC companies totally miss. I remember talking to a, a, a friend of mine, a peer of mine, who is a business coach, and he was talking to one of the VIPs at one of the big manufacturers. I won't say who. I mean, this guy's way up the ladder. And the guy was saying, you know, HVAC companies, they need a resource for proper branding. They need, they need to learn how to brand properly. And we in the industry don't know that. We love our company name. We love our wraps. We, or we even go to some of these wrap companies and get that taken to the next level. But the point is, you can have a wonderful brand and a wonderful wrap, but if it doesn't stand for something that pushes a button in a certain type of customer, then you're kind of right back where you started, right? You may get more, you may get more of those customers, but you're not going to get necessarily the right kind of customers. You get more good customers as well as more bad customers. <laughs> so it's it's really important to understand this. And this is part of the journey from the struggling HVAC contractor to what we call the next generation HVAC entrepreneur. The game's changing and you don't have to work as hard if you learn to work smarter. So when you're out there doing marketing and advertising, be careful of the shotgun marketing circle of death, right? It's just a vicious circle. You, know, you advertise, they come in, you know, you get what you can, and they're gone. They never come back. And so you're right back. You, you advertise, customer calls, you go out there, you, you get a one-time service call maybe, and they never come back. They never call back. So you advertise, and it's just this vicious circle. And versus uh, magnetic alignment, where we do a proper marketing system that takes everything into account, right? The image that you're presenting, the message that you're sending, the customer experience, the delivery of the uh, of, of the service, and the bonding that takes place, so that what happens is they go, "Wow, this I like this company," right? And you enter in uh, their circle of uh, their intimate circle. Let's just call it that. And because everybody's got their circle, right? And if you're outside, you're 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 an outsider. But if you're in my circle, you're okay. I tr I trust you. So in my circles, my family, in my circle, my friends, in my circle are my neighbors. Uh, well, not all my neighbors, right? But uh, maybe I'm my barbers in there because you know I go see him every two weeks, and we always have a good conversation. In my circle is my my attorney, maybe, or or my my accountant, or. I'm a doctor or what have you. There's, there's a select group of people that's in your circle and you trust them. Well, once you become the heating and air conditioning person in their circle, you're in. And unless you screw that up, you're in. But what brought you in as an individual, let's say you're a one man operation and they liked you and they bonded with you. They can be totally destroyed when you hire somebody and you send them out there and they don't share the same values. They don't do the same things as you did. They don't push the same buttons. And this is the problem with culture. I'm telling you, all this stuff is tied together. All this stuff is tied together. And it's it's not that hard, but it is an absolute disconnect for most 95% of the business owners out there, if not more. Some of the really, really big guys get this. And uh, a lot of them just take classes and they learn, well, you know, I just need to do this, this, and this, put my booties on, you know, put the drop cloth down and, you know, say a lot, say these, you know, follow this uh, script and uh, they're going to respond and they will, they will. Um, but there's uh there's a shelf life to that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, trends are happening. People are changing. Marketing is changing. The way we market is changing. Social media is huge right now. You're not doing social media marketing. You're, you're missing out uh, big time. And so there's a lot to consider. And so tapping in fundamentally to who your customers are, your best customers, who they are at their core and who you are at your core and, and, and building something off of that and hiring based on that allows you to get the foundation that you need in order to have success. So you, if you want to find out who your ultimate customer avatar is that's what we call that your your very best customer um versus this chaotic customer jumble that you have out there now a mixture of all this that and the other uh 
you have to kind of do the homework. Now, I'll give you, I'll give you a little thing that you can do. And uh, if you're listening to this, I venture to say the majority of the listeners just won't do this because we like to listen. We don't necessarily like to do, uh, which is unfortunate because that's where the magic is. But if you have Google reviews and if you go down and you sort them by most recent and you literally extract the values and if you are confused as what words are values and what, what words are not values, um, you can look that up, uh, you know, on Google or whatever, but, uh, one, one, one of our primary company values is integrity. You know, we're an honest company, right? Honesty and integrity. This is part of who we are. And this is very important to people who are of integrity and they want to hire a company that they can trust. They're looking for people. They're looking for a company with that quality and they, and they don't know how to measure it, but they know it when they see it. And so based on that, we build a strategy and let them know when they see this awesome company, but we don't stop at that one value. We go through all of our customer reviews and we see what do our customers value from us now. And a lot of times it's an eye opener. When we do this exercise as a team, you start to see a lot of chess go out, especially these little guys that, that all that we see this, this pattern of uh, honesty. Oh, they're so honest. This is an honest company. And, that, but we'll also see a high number of feedback on very fair price, good value. Right. And so if you learn how to read between the lines, what that's saying is the customer thinks this cheaper guy is honest because he charged less, because if he can do it for less, why do the big company try to charge so much? And what they don't know is, well, maybe the little guy doesn't understand his pricing and he's undercharging. Customer assumes he's honest and he gives a fair price. And there's things like that that we can extract out. And I'm using that as an example because that's really common on, on the smaller companies because we don't have to charge as much as the bigger companies when we're small, do we? But when you get to a certain size, well, you got to do what you got to do. You got to raise your prices and you got to build all this. Everything comes from somewhere. You know, um, I mean, everything from, you know, the ink pen sitting on your desk, your advertising, um, money that you lose on, if you, when you lose a tool, everything's in there. So we have to build a healthy number and be able to charge. So if your value, if your customer value values you based on how little you charge them, well, how deep of a relationship are you going to have from that? See what I'm saying? So anyway, some things to think about. We're going to be doing more of these. Hopefully you got a little something out of today's uh, few minutes. We'll probably be average in 20, 30 minutes on these little short uh, uh, podcast uh, clips. And uh, obviously you don't have to look at these. It's just me talking. So you can listen to these going down the road through some filler time. And uh, maybe, you know, we can get you thinking about some stuff that you haven't thought about. I mean, it's, it's easy to think about the grind day in and day out, the fires you're putting out, running calls. And it's very easy to lose your priorities and, as well as your focus on what you need to be working on in between all the chaos, right? Once you start getting these, these things systemized and organized, it's only then that you bring on an employee. But I'm here to tell you, for those of you who have experience, you know this, you want that new employee that you can just send off in your stead. And, and generally what happens is for every employee you hire, it's that much work on top of you to babysit and handhold that employee it, because you're not structured yet. You're not ready to scale. And so these, these are, these are all stepping stones. So your job is the smaller company and even you mid-sized companies, if you're kind of stuck at a certain size, if you're, you can't seem to cross that $2 million mark or, or something like that, there's generally something happening there and it's keeping you the owner you know, up to your elbows and handling stuff and, 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 and the company needs you too much and you can't scale you. You can't grow a company. You can't multiply you. You can't clone you. Okay. Scaling means that we take this process and we add another person and, and they just follow the system. We add another person. They just follow the system and we add another person and we just follow the system. Now getting the right person to come to work for you. That's a challenge. Getting the right customer to call your company. That's a challenge. So all this is, this is all strategy guys, but most of us are just going to go old school and just work harder. 
And, you know, my hat's off to you for, for you guys working harder. But until you learn to work smarter, um, you're going to keep hitting that ceiling, okay? And so it's time to, you know, step your game up and, you know, um, get get involved, you know, with a business coach. Like, you know, obviously that's what I do. But, uh, you know, get your business coach or somebody that's an expert in that particular area, whatever it is you're working on, and get you a little help. That's what it's there for, right? These people are out there for a reason, um, you know. People praise the trade school, and then uh, when you're when you finish the trade school, all we do is criticize it, right? But it it, it served, right? You know, you needed those fundamentals to get to, to at least get out there where you can get dangerous, like I used to say. And but likewise, uh, in order to go to the next level, you need to continuously be reading books. You need to be taking classes. I recommend mastermind groups with other heating and air conditioning business owners, as well as some kind of a business coach or somebody that you can call on periodically and get that second opinion. If not get, get full on, you know, full, full coaching and guidance. And the biggest impact that you're ever going to have on your business, keep this in mind is getting it done, right? You can know everything to do in the world, but it's consistent action that ultimately yields success. Pete Ramsey here, HVAC Greatness. See you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, it's Pete. A quick thank you for joining me today on HVAC Greatness, or maybe just letting me keep you company as you're out running about. Either way, I sincerely hope that you picked up on something today that might help you and your business progress on your journey to HVAC Greatness. Want more? Make sure we stay on the air. Share the podcast with a friend, rate and review it, and be sure to subscribe to our email list at HVACGreatness.com so that you don't miss anything. This is Pete Ramsey signing out and reminding you why your customers love your business and what makes your company great in one word, you. So let's keep refining your already good image and make it truly great.